Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've had an amazing few days. I feel like most people usually feel like January takes a long time to get through, especially post sort of festive season and for many of my viewers, you're in the Northern Hemisphere and of course winter months always feel like they go three times as slowly. But especially with lockdowns that are happening up in the North at the moment, in the UK and obviously across America, I can only imagine that January has been even more tediously slow. I feel very lucky that January has kind of flown by, but we are in the middle of summer here. January is also my birthday month, so it's always a really exciting time for me. If you missed my birthday Q&A get ready with me video as well, I will link that up in the information card and down below. It's just a lovely little chill get ready with me. I'm using a lot of my favorite products from the moment. I list them all in the description and I answer a bunch of questions about turning 30 because this month I guess my first favorite is that I turned 30. Yes, officially in the 30s club. I'm very much here for it. I'm really excited to be in my 30s now and that was such a nice video to film just to kind of like think about where I've come so far and sort of talk a little bit about where I hope to see myself in the next few years. So definitely check it out if you did miss it. I was actually working on my birthday. I was doing some chamber music coaching at the Christchurch School of Music chamber music summer course. So it was really nice to be able to like coach music doing the thing I love like on my birthday. But of course we still had a little bit of time in the evening to celebrate too. So we went out for dinner at Chihuahua, which if you're in Christchurch, I highly recommend that Mexican restaurant because it is so good. The fried chicken is unreal. We actually ordered two plates of it. Of course we didn't make it through the second plate but we got it in a little takeaway box and then had it in our sandwiches the next day and it's so good. And then after that we went for a drink at the Pink Lady. Again, if you're in Christchurch and you want a cool bar, definitely check out the Pink Lady. It's at the top of a hotel building so you get gorgeous views of the city and just an overall really nice night. I didn't have any big 30th party or anything. It just wasn't really my jam. I wasn't really feeling it and I absolutely loved my birthday. So that was a good favorite from the month. But jumping into some beauty favorites, a couple of these I've talked about quite recently in my like 2020 beauty favorites because they're ones that I loved last year as well, but I've kind of gotten back into now that it is warmer here. Um, the first is the sunscreen. So this is the Can Make Mermaid Skin Gel. So this is a facial sunscreen. It's SPF 50 PA++++. So it's a Japanese branded sunscreen. You can buy it on your style. I always go back to this in the summer months because I find it to be a lot better for my slightly more oily skin in the summer. It's more of a gel consistency, so it sits really nicely under makeup. I wouldn't say that it's hydrating or moisturizing in any way, but it isn't drying either. So I do feel like a range of skin types could definitely enjoy it. It does leave quite a glowy finish on your skin, but if you were to use like a mattifying foundation or something on top. I don't think it would show through that much. And then a hair care favorite from this month is actually a new conditioner that I've been loving. So I went to Chemist Warehouse a couple of weeks ago and bought myself some new shampoo and conditioner because my other ones had run out. They have gone into my empties bin. I'm gonna try and collect all my empties from this year and do like a yearly empties at the end of the year. I'm very curious to see how much beauty trash I acquire over a year, so I thought that would be quite fun. Let's see if I can keep it up. You can remind me in January 2022. But I needed to get a new kind of day-to-day shampoo and conditioner, one that isn't like a purple toning one or anything, or a, a really intense sort of hair mask. So I grabbed the shampoo and conditioner from the brand called My Organics, and the only reason I bought this is because of how skinny the bottles are. We have a little ensuite attached to the bedroom here, and it has quite a small shower with just one of those very small little plastic units on the inside, and me and Alex both have to share it for our products. So I literally picked these because of how skinny the bottles were. I also thought they looked quite chic as well, quite minimalist. So it's from the brand My Organics. I think it's an Italian brand. Yeah, made in Italy, so it's right on the front. I have to say that the shampoo, I wouldn't call a favorite. It's perfectly fine. I'm enjoying it enough. It isn't anything extraordinary, but the conditioner is really nice. It is their organic pro keratin conditioner, argan and avocado. So this has obviously argan and avocado oils in it. It is really nourishing, but it also isn't so intense that you can't like use it every day if you wanted to. I only wash my hair every second to third day though, but if you were like a daily shampoo and conditioner kind of person, this is a good one for daily use. But it still has that thickness to it that I love in a conditioner. I hate runny conditioners. I just ugh, hate the way they sort of slip off your hair. So I really, really love the texture of this one. I will warn you though, if you hate fennel or licorice or aniseed kind of scents, or flavors <laughs> like my husband then you will hate this because he hates black licorice and anything that kind of resembles that 
fragrance but thankfully I mean I just don't use this if we're uh, ever in there together which to be honest doesn't happen very often because it's a tiny shower and it's actually been uncomfortable but I personally really love the smell because I love black licorice and fennel oil does smell quite a lot like licorice so I really like it and then I have a gradual tanner to talk about now stay with me I know many of you watch me because I do tend to embrace my fair skin a lot and it's not that I'm against fake tan I just personally prefer not to be tanned I just prefer to embrace my natural skin tone apart from my legs and that is the reason why I love this product so in the summer months when I do tend to get my legs out a little bit more in a bathing suit or with a short dress um, I always feel like my legs just look twice as fair as the rest of my body and that just doesn't quite look right so in the summer every sort of third or fourth day I will do one very light coat of a gradual tanner and I find that that alone just on my legs is enough just to kind of balance everything out um, so it takes me a long time to get through one of these I'll probably go through one bottle a year at most so the one I've been loving it's a new one I got here in New Zealand is the Garnier body body summer sun-kissed lotion and the reason I like this is it smells gorgeous it's got apricot oil in it so it smells really beautiful it doesn't smell like you know like some fake tanny kind of products have that like Dorito chippy smell Ooh. this smells really beautiful just smells like a nice apricotty moisturizer and I find that the tan is not very strong at all like like it's really 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 subtle one layer you probably won't even notice anything but it's just enough for me just to be like mm, even things out a little bit and match the rest of my body then I have two makeup favorites from the month I have a few more but they're all sort of products that are like discontinued so I can't really talk about them um, such as like my blush I'm wearing the Aritalm sugar ball cushion cheek colors again and I've been really enjoying them but I can't seem to find them in stock anymore but a product that is still in stock and one that I recently popped back into my everyday makeup little stash to use is the Colourpop Going Coconuts palette now I got this in about March last year Jessica Braun and I did like a little video collab where we like swapped our favorite products and reviewed them and this was one of the products that she sent me and I love this palette for me this is a perfect kind of warm tone palette for my sort of complexion I do have a neutral to cool undertone so anything that leans super red and orangey tends to just make me look a bit ill this is about as warm as I can lean so I can kind of embrace that lovely you know warm summer golden glow look without it looking kind of wrong but this is definitely like a kind of summery palette I tend to reach more for my cooler palettes in the winter or cooler months I actually use almost every shade in this palette the only one I probably don't use a lot is this one down here get cracking and that's because it is a matte shade with glitter and that's not my favorite kind of formula but the rest of them the actual shimmers gorgeous the mattes are amazing and it's making me really really tempted to buy their that's taupe palette which I know is going to be so similar to the Natasha Denona one I have but I've just really fallen back in love with like the Colourpop formula and just you know the convenience of it being only nine shades if you happen to own this palette as well as the that's taupe palette let me know what it's like you know formula wise whether they're kind of comparable because I do really love this one and use it a lot this is what I'm wearing my eyes today I just have a very soft look of colada in the crease and a bit of cocoa crush on the lid just really like tapped in very lightly it looks amazing if you build it up strongly with like a flat brush and some you know spray but I just sort of did a little wash of color it's just very subtle and it goes really nicely with the like apricotty kind of cheek and what is on my lips which is my next favorite so because I've been going for that slightly warmer look on my sort of eyes and cheeks I've wanted a bit more of a warmer nude compared to what I typically wear which is the NYX lavender and lace lip pencil which is a bit more mauvey so I've been reaching for this one by Nabla which is their close-up lip shaper and this is in the shade nude number one so it is a bit more of a warmer brownie nude but it does have a bit of pink in it which is I think why it kind of suits me and I can get away with it and then the lipstick on top that I'm wearing is the MAC love you back matte lipstick so this again is a nice kind of warmer peachier nude for me which is one I typically only really wear more in the summer when I'm wearing those kind of warmer colors on my face and then when I do more of a cooler eye look I tend to reach more for the mauvey kind of nude lip combo so a little style favorite from the month is a new dress that I got for my birthday so this is a little spotty little dress that I got from Kukai I'll just insert some pictures because it's going to show up so much better than me trying to hold it up it's a long sleeve little mini dress it fits quite fitted for me in the body but on the models that they show they obviously have a lot more of a 
straight up and down kind of figure and it sits a little bit more like a shift dress and it's actually called snow leopard print so it does have a kind of subtle leopard look about it but obviously in the black and the white and I just absolutely love it so I've already worn it like three times this past week since getting it and I plan to wear it very often I think it'll look really nice in a more casual sense with like you know opaque tights and some boots and like a chunky cardigan over top or something in winter but then it also is really nice in the summer months um, with bare legs or sheer stockings like I was wearing it here. So a food favorite from this month has to be risotto. I've made three different risottos this month and I'm just having a little bit of a moment with it. I honestly think I almost like risotto more than pasta and I think that is quite controversial. Although many of you agreed with me on Instagram so I was quite pleasantly surprised. The first one I made was out of one of the Jamie Oliver cookbooks that I have, which I love. That was like a classic little mushroom risotto and it was beautiful and I'd 100% make it again has white wine in it which always makes things better but I really wanted to try and recreate a beetroot risotto that I'd had at a cafe in Australia ages ago and I always wanted to recreate it it was like a roast beetroot risotto with goat's cheese and like a garlic crumb so I've kind of created my own recipe by taking the base recipe of Jamie's and just adapting it switching some ingredients out and such so I'm gonna try and recreate that early next month and get a recipe up on my blog for it if you're interested. I know many of you are very keen and messaging me about it on Instagram. I won't be able to have that recipe up by the time this video goes live because I'm going away next week but I will try and get it up in early February. And then I made another one of Jamie's recipes which was a broccoli risotto. I will say that one probably wasn't quite as good didn't have the white wine in it. It was a little bit more of a simple recipe, but it did have gorgonzola. I think that's how you pronounce it. Gorgonzola cheese in it, which is a blue cheese that I can kind of handle. Sometimes I find blue cheese a little bit strong for my liking, and I certainly am not one to reach for it on a cheese board. But if it's in something, I can usually get away with it. And the gorgonzola cheese that was in this risotto was very good. I really liked it. I have a fitness favorite of the month. And this is something that I'm very excited to share because I have finally found a form of exercise of working out that I love and it is literally 100% thank you to Alex because he has begged and begged and begged for me to get involved with this particular sport for like over a year um, and I was very cautious about it because it is bouldering which if you don't know what bouldering is it's like rock climbing but without ropes and it's all very like low to the ground well it doesn't feel that way when you're on the wall but <laughs> if you are to fall even from the top you know hold if you do fall you're not going to hurt yourself because it's not very high it's only a few meters high and there's massive mats underneath um to catch you so it is quite safe but my main reason why it took me so long to get into bouldering was because of my hands as a violinist I was very worried that it would be a little bit too hard on my wrists on my hands you know my tendons um, so I waited until I had a bit of a gap in my performing schedule to try it I actually first went in late November and then went a few more times through December and then started to really get into it so much so that I now have my own shoes, I've got my own climbing pants and Alex just gave me my own chalk bag for my birthday as one of my presents. So I very much have all the kit and I'm feeling very pro even though I'm very amateur when I'm actually on the wall like definitely one of the worst people at the gym. I'm definitely feeling so much stronger. I've got muscles in my arms that I didn't know existed. It is actually making things a little bit harder with some of my clothing like some of my blouses and such fit a little tighter now because I am carrying maybe a little bit more weight than I was like a year ago but also just like my muscles are growing making it hard for some of my tops to fit so nicely so it's quite funny but I would rather have some muscle it's also just such a nice thing to do with Alex as well like it's nice to have another thing for us to have in common a hobby to enjoy together I know that this month I didn't manage to get a vlog up I was really hoping to film a vlog it just didn't end up working out this month I actually ended up having a lot more packed into it work-wise than I expected like with performances and the course and all of that so it was quite hectic but next month in February I'll definitely do a like day in my life vlog at home and I can take you guys along to the gym and show you a little bit of me on the wall and then finally the last favorite I want to talk about is the thing that we've all been watching over the last month Bridgerton it is a favorite but I can't say that I was convinced at the very beginning. Bridgerton is, without a doubt, the best mishmash of Jane Austen meets Gossip Girl. It's a historical fantasy, so it means it's inspired by kind of historical settings, but it's not accurate, it's a fantasy world. And there are a lot of videos on YouTube now about like commentary about the costumes, the casting, 
you know, all these sort of elements. But not many people have talked about the music and that is something that for me st stood out so much. Like, obviously being a historical fantasy, they can take a lot of liberties with um, historical accuracy of the music they used or um, the instrumentations and things like that. And I didn't mind that when they did the kind of modern day song mashups with a classical twist. Those were quite fun, I get why they used them, it kind of added to the vibe, especially with all the polyester in the room you know, and the modern makeup. But the thing that annoyed me more than anything else in the show was the terrible musician acting. Like, for goodness sake, how hard is it to cast actual musicians in those roles, especially when they're not a speaking role? But honestly, Bridgerton has some of the worst musician acting ever. Okay, on second viewing, these do actually look like real musicians. No fake musician would have that kind of left hand set up. But obviously the directors told them to fake play, probably because they can't be bothered shooting the musicians separately to the actors who are needing to be recorded. So that was hilarious. And the other thing I thought was funny was when they went to a show, so they all went to this concert and they're watching musicians on stage playing Vivaldi. You said at the beginning of the series that this was set in like 1812 or something? Like, hello, the Baroque revival had not happened yet. People in that era were not going to concerts of Vivaldi. And why is it that every period movie ever uses Vivaldi's Four Seasons? There are other great pieces. And as cringy as so many of the elements are, it does just somehow work. Even though it's really fun as, you know, a specialist of music, I can look at it and pick it apart. But then I'm like, yeah, but overall, it all kind of works and it is a good TV show. So I did actually really enjoy it. But that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give it a like on the way out. And until my next video, have a wonderful couple of days and we'll talk soon. Bye. Thank you.